Hi everyone, my name is Jason and I'm excited to bring to you today the home buying journey. We're gonna look at navigating your way to home ownership. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to look at when we go is qualifying for a mortgage. We're also gonna look at understanding lender and credit requirements, what it's gonna to take to buy your first house, what type of credit you're gonna to need to make that happen. We're gonna also look at the impacts of outstanding debt. We're gonna definitely explore different loan options between FHA, VA loans, as well as conventional loans. And then we're gonna talk about the benefits of using a realtor. Qualifying for a mortgage starts with the first step of knowing your credit score. Minimum credit score is going to depend on the type of loan that you choose. We're also gonna look at the funds for down payment. You're gonna need funds for closing costs and down payment. We're gonna look at that calculation to see how much you're gonna need for that. We're also gonna look at maximum debt to income ratio, which is gonna show you the debt versus your income on your credit. And I'm gonna show you a great calculation a little later on how you can do that for yourself. And the last thing is two years of employment history. Now, sometimes you may hear that you need to be at the same job or work in the same place for two years, and that's not necessarily the case. You have to have two years of employment history. Now, if you are self-employed, you'll need two years of self-employment income that is showing on your tax return. Okay, let's take an in-depth look at credit requirements. The first step we're gonna look at on credit is that credit score again. So a 580 again on an FHA and a 620 on a conventional. We're gonna to wanna to see two to three years of credit history and two to three trade lines. Now, a trade line is a credit line, such as a credit card, a car loan, a personal loan, anything on your credit with the exception of a student loan. They don't necessarily need to be open anymore, but you need to have at least two to three years of credit history and two to three trade lines, as well as no outstanding judgments or public records in order to qualify for a mortgage. So when you apply for a mortgage, we're gonna pull your credit. And we always get the question of which credit score are you going to use? We actually look at all three, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Now the way a mortgage works is we take all three scores, we take the high score, we drop the high score. We take the low score and we drop the low score and we look at that middle score as the average score to use when we price and score your mortgage for qualifications. Now let's say there are two borrowers on your mortgage. You have a spouse or a partner on your mortgage with you. That mortgage then we're gonna take all six credit scores and we're gonna drop the highs and drop the lows and take the middle scores and then take the lower of the middle scores and use that as an average. That's how credit is worked and how scores are used during a mortgage process. As we look at buying our first home, there are a few things with our credit that we're going to wanna to stay away from. One of the things that we're gonna to wanna to stay away from is paying off old credit cards. Now, I'm sure that you may have a credit card that you've had for a very long time and you've paid it off. Don't close it. The longer the credit card stays on there, it's producing positive history to tell your credit story, so don't close it. You also wanna make sure that you make your payments on time. Making late payments is the number one factor in a negative credit profile, so stay away from making late payments. Applying for new credit is going to lower your score, so unless it's absolutely necessary in the process of buying a home, don't apply for new credit. On this next slide, I'm gonna show you the impact of outstanding debt. Earlier I explained I was gonna show you a calculation that was going to help you understand how much you qualify for when you're buying your first house, and this is a slide that'll do that. In this first section here, we're gonna look at household gross income, and you're gonna to wanna to multiply that by 43%, which is the maximum debt to income ratio for a standard conventional loan. Now let's take a look at expenses on credit, the next section. Now there's a way that you can get this number. You're gonna to wanna to take a look at your credit report and calculate all of your expenses that you have. So you take all of those expenses on credit and you're gonna to wanna to put them here. So you're gonna to wanna to take then your qualifying debt minus your expenses on credit and that will leave you your amount left for your new mortgage payment. That's how much mortgage you can qualify for in a home buying scenario. So now let's talk about the 411 of funds needed. First, we look at down payment. Now what that does is it reduces the lender risk. The more money that you put down, 
the less risk the mortgage lender has on your home. It also reduces or eliminates private mortgage insurance, PMI. I'm sure you've heard the word PMI before. Private mortgage insurance is actually an insurance that protects the lender in case a borrower doesn't make their mortgage payments. Now the down payment as well will determine the program and the loan program you're gonna qualify for, as well it's going to reduce that loan balance. Now when we look at closing costs, they're gonna consist of your title fees, your lending and escrow fees. Now escrows are your taxes and insurances that we're gonna collect on your behalf. They're gonna be based on that loan amount. We're gonna pay those at closing and may include something called discount points. Now that we talked about the 411 of funds needed, where can the money come from? First and foremost, it can come from savings accounts. You can use gift funds if you have a family member that's interested in helping you buy your first house. It can also come from your investment accounts. You can move the money out of your investment accounts as well as possible seller contributions. Now, as you navigate the home buying journey, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at the different types of loans that are out there. Okay, let's first take a look at conventional mortgage loans. These are backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Minimum credit scores start at a 620 and debt to income starts at 43%. Minimum down payment on a conventional loan is 3% and PMI is removable as long as you get to that 20% down at some point during the process. Now let's take a look at VA loans. Now you have to be a military member in order to qualify for one of these loans, but if you do, the minimum credit score on those starts at a 580 and goes up to a 660. There's a debt to income ratio at 41% on that. You don't need a down payment with the government VA loan, as well as PMI is not required. It's the only loan where if you don't put 20% down that you don't need PMI. Now the other loan that the government offers is the FHA or USDA loan. Now the minimum credit score on these start at a 580 and debt to income on this goes all the way up to 57%. Minimum down payment is three and a half percent. PMI is on this loan for the life of the loan. In order to remove it, you will need to refinance. Now let's take a look at the value of a realtor. The realtor services are actually paid by the commission from the seller's property. Now having a realtor on your side is really, really important because the realtor is gonna help you negotiate your contract, help you find your dream home. And something that you get access to with a realtor is their MLS listings. So you get the opportunity to see the houses first and get the opportunity to put an offer in if it's something that you love. So now that you've found your dream home, what's next? So first and foremost, you're gonna sign your contract and you're gonna make your first good faith down payment deposit towards your new home. Now, there are two opportunities to negotiate the price on your home. And the first time is in the beginning, before you sign that contract, you're gonna negotiate how much you wanna pay for the property. And the second time is after your home inspection period. Now, home inspections are not required, but highly recommended. Now, if there's anything that you found during that home inspection that needs to be corrected, you have an opportunity to go back to the seller now to try and get it rectified or get some additional funds back at closing. Now throughout this process, it's important now that you stay in contact with your lender. After you've finalized all your negotiations on your home inspection and your contract, it's important that you get the lender the required documents that they are asking for. Now this is a really key time to where you make sure you do not open any additional credit cards, car loans, anything on your credit profile. There are debt to income numbers that we've already worked out throughout this process. You don't want to add any additional debt to your credit profile throughout this process. This is the time period where you keep in contact with your lender and stay away from your credit. Here at Partners, we're here to help you on this journey of buying your first home. We offer free mortgage consultations. I call them affordability consultations. We've built some specialized lending programs. We offer a no down payment loan to our members where you don't have to have a down payment in order to buy a house. We also offer a program called Home Advantage. So if you choose to use one of the select realtors in this program, you'll actually get a credit back at closing. Now these realtors have been vetted and are specialized in the counties and states that partners services. Partners also offers different educational opportunities here, such as preparing your credit for home buying, refinancing your mortgage, 
budgeting essentials, and many other programs that you can find on our website at partnersfcu.org. Thank you for joining us here today. I hope this presentation helped in explaining a little bit more about the home buying journey. Thank you.